Hey guys, Katie Taylor here from ScrappingKatie.com, where I show you how to preserve your family's memories through the art of scrapbooking. Hey guys, it is time for part four of my five part series on the must haves from the brand new Close to My Heart core catalog. Today's part four is all about the tools, and I know it's been a while since parts one, two, and three, but it's because I was waiting on one specific tool. I finally got that in a few days ago. I have used it. I'm going to show you how I used it and compare what I currently have to it, and then I'm also going to show you two other tools. So you're going to have three must-have tools for your craft room by the end of this video. I will switch the camera around, and let's get started get the brand new core catalog you will notice at the very back of the catalog is where we keep all of our tools so the first thing I want to show you is our stamp chamois case so we've had our stamp chamois for a while if you are not familiar with stamp chamois that is what you can use to clean your stamps and I have just had my chamois like in a little soap dish so I'm super excited that now we have this case it closes it's got a top and a bottom it closes when your stamp chamois is not in use. And I will show you what I do with mine while I am using it. And then we've got our other tools. The thing I am most excited about and the thing that I have been waiting to get my hands on is our brand new tea ruler. This is unlike any other tea ruler and definitely better than the one that you see me use here on my channel a lot. I will demonstrate that in my project here in just a second. So make sure you stick around for that as well as some of our other tools. But the other one I'm going to showcase today is our paper strip saver. So all of those strips of paper that I know we all like to accumulate and save, we now have a way to do so. It is much like a memory protector. It has perforated pockets. And again, I will show you how it works at the end of this video. So let's take a look at our project and how these tools work. So in front of me, I have the pieces for that companion page that I did the other day. I'm using Crisp Air and then the Four Seasons Autumn and then of course this photo. So the tool I am super excited about is this. It is our brand new tea ruler. And if you are a follower, you know I love my tea ruler. I'm going to pull out this other tea ruler that I've been using and just show you the comparison. So you can see here that our brand new one is actually 14 inches instead of 12, which helps a lot, especially I have my glass mat, so that works. But if you are using your Versa mat, if you're using your Versa mat, then by the time I put my old T ruler at the corner of my Versa mat, you can see here it doesn't even reach all the way to the 12 inches because it is exactly 12 inches and I have to make up for that half inch up there. So now we have this new ruler, 12 inches, you can see here, but that isn't the coolest thing. The coolest thing is this. No, I didn't break it. It is a magnet. It's magnetized. So it actually is a tea ruler when you want it to be a tea ruler. And when you don't, it's two rulers. So small. So envision planners, uh, travel notebooks, anything like that. You have an eight inch ruler. Super, super cute. And then, or you can just have a 14 inch ruler or you can snap them together and have the best of both worlds and have the tea ruler. So I'm going to show you how that comes into play by going ahead and completing this companion layout. It hasn't been that long since I posted this layout, but let's just revisit it. So here is the right side and you can tell that I'm going to bring over the strips of paper by using these strips of paper. I am going to bring over, see those gold gilt splatters? I've got those already on my layout base. And then for my photo, the backdrop, the mat to these two photos, I'm bringing it over to this left layout as well. And then of course, I am going to be using the Crisp Air sticker sheet and the Four Seasons Autumn sticker sheet to bring those stickers over, as well as the little enamel dots and the jute. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and get these strips of paper 
laid down. The easiest way to do that is going to lay out my base page. Go ahead and put my tea ruler down. Now, I'm not going to lie. My glass board is also magnetic. So I was hoping that these magnets would be strong enough that as soon as I put this in place, it would stick. It's got a little bit of magnetic pull to it, but not a whole lot. So I want this strip exactly half an inch from this right side. So I'm just lining up my pattern, I mean my base page, and then using my glass board to line up this pattern paper. So half an inch from the right side and then a half an inch from the top and the bottom. Now, while the glass board is handy for just kind of eyeballing things, this is where my tea ruler comes in and I really want to make sure it's straight because this is kind of um, like the pillar that is going to set the tone for the rest of the pattern. So now I'm going to move my tea ruler to the bottom and I just want to make sure that these pieces are lined up at the bottom. So my next piece is this kind of quilted pattern. I didn't really cut it straight, so I should have centered those squares, if you know what I mean. I'm putting the smaller squares on the left side. I'm thinking that that's going to look better simply because my photo is going to be covering up the majority of that. And I think it, the larger squares just kind of flow into this right side of the layout. And then the last piece is this gorgeous pumpkin paper from the Chris Bear. So these two are from the Chris Bear, and this one is from the Four Seasons Autumn. I love this pumpkin paper. And if you watched my other process video on that companion page, that right layout, I kind of explained why I'm choosing the pumpkin paper on this side and it was because there was only one photo of them with pumpkins in it and I wanted to separate the pumpkins. So you see there's only this one photo so I wanted to make sure you had a pumpkin photo over here and a lot of pumpkins over here. Now I do have that pumpkin on the sticker and I might have another pumpkin sticker on here but for the most part those pumpkins are separated. So for my photo mat, it's not the same size as these photos over here, but I definitely want it to be complimentary um, and aesthetically pleasing once I get it in place. So I'm thinking it is about the same size as these actual photos and not the photo mat. So I want it lined up with the bottom of here. And so I am going to put that right there. I only have glue on the center of this. That's going to allow me to tuck things up and under. And I definitely want this kind of coming off into this white space, but I don't want this layout centered by any means. So I'm gonna scoot it over just a little bit to the right. Now these pieces of paper, I used a distressing tool to distress the edges. So you can see all of those rough edges. And then I used a mini blending tool with toffee ink to go around all the edges, to, just to kind of add that rustic look. And then this photo has 3D foam on the back of it. And I am going to go ahead and get that adhered down. Now all that's left to do is embellish with the sticker sheets and I'm going to speed up the process on that and kind of walk you through my thoughts but in a sped up fashion. Now embellishing is one of my favorite things to do. It is almost like a puzzle. So my little math brain loves it. Now while I truly believe there are no rules in scrapbooking, I am going to just walk you through some things that go through my mind as I embellish, especially if there is another page 
like there is in this case. So I'm pulling things from the sticker sheets that I have on that right page. That way they can carry over to this left page. So we've got the tag, we've got some strips for some sentiments, that little scallop circle, and then those leaves I'll bring back in here in just a second. So I'm just roughing these out to try to see where I want them. I took the sticky off of them. So I, I will either have to reapply the liquid adhesive that I use, or sometimes I prefer to use 3D foam tape. So while I'm tacking all this down, it's a great opportunity to remind you to like this video if you are liking what you're seeing so far. It helps YouTube show you more of the same, and it also helps my channel out in the process. Also hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll be alerted the next time I post a crafty video. And much like most of my subscribers, you're either other Close to My Heart makers or you are a VIP of another Close to My Heart maker, which means that you visited my channel to be inspired to use the Close to My Heart products that you have on hand, which is great. I love seeing other people use Close to My Heart products. If you feel so inclined, there is a new feature on my YouTube channel, and that is the Super Thanks, which means that while you will not be ordering from my website because you either a maker or you're a VIP of a maker, you can actually leave a monetary little gift, a little thank you. I actually received my first one and I was never so excited about $2.50 than I have ever been when I saw that notification. So if you ever feel inspired by my channel and know that you cannot order from me, Go ahead and hit that little super thanks button and you can you, you can leave any amount of money that you want. And then that way it just kind of helps me out and it lets me know that you are enjoying it. The other ways to do that is like I said, like, comment, and share with your friends or use any of the links down below to order the products that you see me using on this channel. So while I am embellishing, you already saw that I brought the tag over. And then if you remember there was a sunflower on that other page. So I've brought it down and I'll walk you through the triangles here in a second. And then I decided to stamp on this layout. Now there is this little row of leaves from the September stamp of the month. And I just stamped that on this page. And then if, since I'm stamping on this left page, I need to add a stamp image on the right. So I'm just cutting a single leaf from that little image and I'm bringing out this right page. I'm inking it up in toffee and I'm going to put three little leaves up here up at the top. And now stamping is on both layouts. So for the other tool that I talked about at the very beginning, this is the stamp chamois case. You can see here it is closed and when I'm ready to use it, I open it and then wet my stamp chamois and it's housed on my desk in open fashion. So now I've brought out the crisp air dots as well as the orange dots and I'm just going to add hearts and little circles around those embellishment clusters. Again, bringing over those clusters and those embellishments from that right layout that I have already done. Now there's a combination of the sapphire hearts, the yellow or orange hearts, and then some round, they're almost like amethyst. Is it amethyst? No, amber. They're almost like um, amber little dots, brown dots. So I'm going to just tack down that photo mat. Remember that I only added adhesive toward the middle. So I would be able to tuck in the stickers behind it. And then I am going to show you that strip saver. Now I'm checking on the availability of the strip saver because I don't see it on my website, but I'll let you know when that comes back into play. So you can see here, those zip strips just fit nice and neat in those little perforated pockets. And then this strip sa saver also has a larger pocket for larger pieces. The uh, pocket doesn't go all the way to the top. So those 12 inch pieces actually stick out beyond the pocket. And so it makes it really easy for you to just grab it and pull it out. So I'm going to continue to stick all these little scraps in these pockets and then the strip saver has three holes, so you can put it like in a through ring binder, or you can just grab the paper collection that it goes with, slip it into the bag, and then store your paper the way you like to store it, and everything is together. I'm bringing out that right layout to kind of show you those triangles. You've got the jute, the tags, the sunflowers, the sentiments, all triangles, and then of course you've got those blues in opposite directions. 
Here is a look at the still shots of both of those layouts. Again, love these photos of our kiddos. And then, of course, love the Crisp Air collection and the Four Seasons Autumn. Remember, I will have all the products linked down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and share with your friends. And if you aren't already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. And then don't forget about the Super Thanks. If you aren't in a position to order from any of the links down below, Super Thanks lets me know that you appreciate what you've seen here and you are inspired. Have a great weekend.